when we first started to harvest cranberries here on this uh, place, it was back in 1940, well, the early 50s, I should say, we had 150 men at one time picking these cranberries. Now, the obscenants today, we're using about 12 to 14 men. And it was done in this manner, and it all worked. The berries are combed off. And you lost about a third of them that went on the ground. So that is the way it was done years ago. These cranberry bogs that you are visiting today are located in Washington Township in the county of Burlington, state of New Jersey. My great grandfather started in about 1868 and he was one of the first cranberry growers in this area. We flood during October for harvest. We start with the, the, the one of the top most bog and then it's dropped from one bog to the other. As, it, as we pick a bog, then we drop it down into the next bog and that water is used over and over again. It's all with the dikes and what we call sluice ways or floodgates. We call them floodgates and canals. And it's all on a gravity flow because of the natural fall of the land. And the upper reservoir, there's approximately 300 acres of water. And that is important as the bog itself. A lot of this water that we are taking from the Shoal Branch and also the West Branch of the Wading River, after we use it here, as it goes through our bogs, we pass a lot of it on to our neighbor, Haynes and Haynes, and then it returns back into the West Branch of the Wading River. So we're really conserving water. We're just using it as it passes by us. The water harvesting began first in Massachusetts, and then our neighbor, Mr. Haynes, brought a machine from Massachusetts down here. I believe that it was about 20 years ago that this happened, and then my youngest son, Abbott, developed a three-reel machine, which was a prototype for the machine that we're using today, and it's worked out very fine. In fact, it's taken the place of about 10 men. You put the water on, and the berry, of course, hangs on sort of in a dangle, and it more or less floats up and extends itself. So then the machine comes along with these reels, and it beats it off. And then the berry, of course, is hollow inside, and it floats. We use the wind a lot. If we don't have any wind, we have what we call push boards, a quarter by four, and they lay on their side, and, and we push the berries over to a conveyor. We have several men that are experienced. They're contract Puerto Ricans, and they do come back each year so that they know what we're doing, and then they can soon teach the other fellows. Water is very important to us since we've gone into the water harvesting. It means that we're getting, say, 99% of the crop, and, and it has increased, too. When I first went in the business, the average a barrel per acre is 35 barrels per acre in New Jersey. Today, we're picking over 200 barrels to the acre. After the berries are harvested, we, we bring them in and we're using hay wagon, same as the farmers in the upper part of the county, your dairy farmers would use a hay wagon. It holds eight boxes. Then they go up to what we call bouncing machines, which are very old and old principle that was developed by berries falling on the cellar steps. The good berry bounces, the bad berry falls straight through. At about every five to seven years, we'll put about an inch or an inch and a half of sand on the bogs. The cranberries is a vine, and it's a runner. So the runner will re-root itself, and then from that it puts up an upright. 
and the upright is where we get our berries. This rejuvenates the bog, and it'll keep it as a new bog for generations. 